um, let's pray and then we'll get started okay um, let's uh, let's pray let's look to the lord at this time father we thank you that um, that you are ever present that you're always there and you are with us today lord and even as we look into your word father god i pray that uh, Spirit of God, that you will open our eyes to see the truth um, that's in Scripture. And uh, I just pray that you will, um, Lord, uh, enable us, empower us, Lord, to be um, doers of your word, Father God. Enable us to apply what we see, what we learn, God, what you teach us uh, in in our daily lives, Father God. And so we we just want to commit ourselves and we commit this um, this term, this course, uh, into your mighty hands. We pray that you'll continue to lead us and reveal great and wonderful things that are there in your word that only you can reveal to our hearts, God. And um, yes, Master, we just want to give you all the praise. I commit this class into your mighty hands. I pray um, that you'll be with each and every person here. And uh, I pray, God, that you'll work out every challenge that is in their lives, Lord. And I just pray that you'll uh, give them hearts and minds to to look to you and to focus on you and uh, your word, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, First and Second Corinthians in the coming days. Um, and this, uh, uh, first we look at 1 Corinthians and that's the note uh, that you've uploaded also. So you can take a look at it and uh, follow through. Um, so it'll, it's going to be a verse-by-verse verse study. I can say that it's uh, it's going to be very interesting. Um, and even as we go verse-by-verse, verse, I'm sure that the Lord will reveal wonderful things. Uh, we're going to look at some of the words that are there. We're going to look at uh, the historical background um, of, uh, of, of the epistle. So uh, definitely it's going to be a meaningful time um, as we um, journey through uh, Corinthians, right? So, so let's get started. Uh, if you have your notes, um, you can open up and follow through. Okay. Um, so we see uh, we 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 read about this uh, place Corinth. We we see Paul writes two epistles uh, to the Corinthians, and uh, in uh, in Corinthians we see that. Um, uh, a lot of instructions, right? Paul writes a lot of instructions. Uh, he gives certain um, revelations about his own experience that we see in Second Corinthians. We see he writes about uh, his own experience. He he writes about how a church should function, and we see all those um, uh, all those principles that he uh, Paul uh, laying down in in the book of Corinthians. Um, in both the epistles, so it's uh, it's quite valuable for a person who is getting trained for ministry, because Paul writes from a lot of experience and by the wisdom and revelation of the Holy Spirit, and he writes to the church and he sees certain things not in place, and he writes to them and he says, okay, this is how it should be, and so on. Okay, so we start right at the beginning. Um, if you look at the the city, okay, the place. Corinth. Uh, Corinth is, uh, uh, we see that it, it was ancient uh, city, uh, a, a city that is a, a port city, and um, it is uh, it was established uh, by Julius Caesar on an ancient site um, in a BC, uh, BC 44, right? So it became the capital of the Roman province of Achaia, and a uh, lot of uh, renovation, a lot of rebuilding, uh, but really a, a thriving place, okay? uh, a place that was thriving uh, during Paul's time uh, commercially, okay? which means there was a lot of business, a lot of trade that was happening. Um, so it was, it was thriving. Um, and also it had a, a multicultural uh, kind of a population there. Um, and we also, uh, when we when we read, we see that uh, it was also a place. Uh, when you read about Corinth, you see that it was also a place which had, um, which was hedonistic in the sense, uh, you know, they were very. It was a very uh, permissive so society, right? A permissive society, meaning that they were quite liberal in their views with regard to their sexuality, with regard to their worship, 
uh, they had they worshipped for example they worshipped uh, Aphrodite they had temples of worship for these two deity, deities that is Apollo and Aphrodite and Aphrodite was supposed to be a goddess of uh, Greek goddess of love so uh, they had this uh, temple built on the highest place uh, on the land uh, known as Acrocorinth uh, built on a hill and it had uh, it was supposed to be uh, a place of uh, where people went and they were also you know they were having all kinds of uh, immoral uh, activities as part of worship so you can imagine the kind of uh, uh, place it was the kind of culture and the kind of values uh, the people had right so uh, uh, so that that was the kind of place to which uh, paul went and uh, he established the church so when we when we study about uh, you know uh, when we read about all this uh, then we are re really able to appreciate the kind of ministry and the kind of work that the holy spirit inspired paul to do in such a place you know many many times we look at um, you know, our own cities and our own cultures. And we say, you know, can God do something? Uh, can can really, can can people be saved in this kind of an environment? You know, we, we, we think about all that. But when we look at Corinth, we see that uh, it was a, a, what we would call a sin city, you know, very permissive culture, very immoral lifestyles, very um, uh, values and everything, very, very, um, very different, very immoral, um, very permissive. Right, and in such a place, uh, Paul goes and he uh, establishes the church right there. Okay, so uh, let's read uh, through some uh, portion of scripture from the book of Acts. Right, so uh, Corinth is mentioned in the book of Acts as one of the places that Paul travels to and stays there and uh, establishes the church. Okay, so uh, when we read. Um, uh, Acts chapter 15, that is where we um, read about Paul's second missionary journey. Okay, So Acts 15, and um, maybe we should look at verse 36, right? So I'm just going to read through a few verses here and mention a few things and then move on, okay? Skip a few verses also. So uh, Acts chapter 15, if you have your Bibles, verse 36, okay? Um, so then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Okay, so that's how the whole missionary journey starts. So he has this uh, discussion with Barnabas and uh, he says, okay, let's go. Now Barnabas wanted to take John Mark and uh, Paul was against uh, taking John Mark because uh, John Mark was, of course, Barnabas's relative. Uh, nephew and uh, John Mark actually, if you if you read the verse, uh, uh, you know before that you see that he left, right? Uh, he 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 actually uh, uh, left them on their mission, right? And they do go on their first missionary journey. So he didn't continue with them. So so Paul was actually against taking uh, John Mark. So they had this, uh, you know, they had this argument, and then Barnabas and John, John Mark leave separately. They go to Cyprus. And Paul takes Silas, and they go on their second missionary journey. Okay, So um, let me just present a map of the second missionary journey. Um, okay. One second. Just a minute. Okay. Um, okay, you, you can see that, I think. Okay. Right, so, um, so we see from Antioch, right? So Antioch is where they, they start. So you see that on the, on the right-hand side corner, Antioch in Syria, and then they they start the journey. So Paul and Silas, they they travel from there. Okay, so uh, chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, we read about um, uh, Paul and Silas traveling from Antioch, going to Derby, And in Derby, um, Paul meets uh, Timothy, 
uh, he hears about uh, Timothy and uh, that he has a good reputation. Rep uh, reputation, sorry. Um, so this is what is written about Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of. Um, verse two. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at and Iconium. Okay, so you see Lystra and Iconium close to Derby, right on the uh, right hand side corner. You see that Derby then Lystra, then uh, Iconium. So Timothy was from Derby, and these are all uh, places which are close to Derby. So um, they, they knew about, the people in uh, Iconium and Lystra knew about Timothy. So they um, they go through these cities, they talk to the people, and uh, just before this, they had the council, Jerusalem council, like people uh, to the Gentile churches. Um, uh, they had actually written the letter saying that, okay, uh, this is what you need to do. You don't need to be circumcised. You, you know, uh, you don't need to uh, keep the law of Moses. Um, and then, you know, so that uh, letter which was given, they so they went and announced that they taught that, and they moved on. Okay, so we we see that they uh, go to uh, the Galatian region, then they go to um, Troas, um, and then from there to. Uh, Neapolis and from there to Philippi. So we see all that mentioned in in the uh, Acts chapter 16, right? We, as we go through Acts chapter 16, then we we see that we know about that incident in Philippi where they were jailed, and uh, you know the, the there was an earthquake, and uh, the jailer and and his family get saved, um, and so on. So we read that in Acts chapter 16. And that happens in Philippi. From Philippi, they move on to, we read this in chapter 17 of the book of Acts. They move on to Amphipolis and Apollonia. Then they come to Thessalonica. Okay, you see those places. Philippi, Philippi Amphipolis, Apollonia, Thessalonica. In Thessalonica also, they go and they, and they preach in the synagogues. Um, and uh, there's some persecution. And from there... They move to Berea now, uh, and the, and in, in seven, uh, Acts chapter seventeen, you read about the people in Berea where they uh, they heard the message. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, so from uh, Berea. He goes on to, you know, Athens, and from Athens to Corinth. Okay, so let's read um, chapter 17 and uh, verse 16. Okay, so verse 16, he's in Athens, and he's actually waiting for Timothy and Silas to join him. Okay, because there's a lot of persecution happening uh, right from Philippi, Thessalonica, and uh, Paul is actually sent uh, onward, so um, he sails and comes on uh, to this place, uh, Athens, and he's waiting for Timothy and uh, uh, and and uh, Timothy and Silas to join him. Right? Okay. Let me just. Um... Okay. Or oh, you want this um, slide to be there in the stream? Sure. Yeah. Sure, they, I can do that. Okay. So, um, so they they come to Athens, and and you know we read about uh, in in chapter seventeen and verse sixteen onwards, we re read about what happens in Athens. Okay. So Paul has this. Uh, he meets this. Uh, he comes to the place. Um, he is provoked. We see that the city is given over to idols, and uh, um, so he goes, and he of course goes and reasoned uh, with the Jews in the synagogue. And also in the marketplace, he he talks to them, he engages with them, and uh, and sh shares the gospel uh, to them, um, and so on. So from there, he moves on to Corinth. Okay, so in Corinth, he meets Priscilla and Aquila. Okay, if you look at Acts chapter eighteen and verse two, we see that he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. And 
and they were of the same trade. They were all tent makers. So they kind of, he joined them and uh, he, he worked uh, alongside them. And he would also go to the synagogues, share the gospel, and every Sabbath uh, he would do that. And then Silas and Timothy, they come, uh, they join Paul, and Paul, uh, uh, you know, testifies everywhere that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, so he faces uh, opposition, and from there he he moves on. So uh, so in Corinth, uh, we, verse eleven, okay, Acts chapter eighteen and verse eleven, we see that he continued there for about a year and a half. Okay, so uh, a year and six months he is there in uh, Corinth and he's teaching okay let's read about that the kind of ministry that he did in Corinth okay um let's read from um let's read from uh, verse 5 Acts chapter 18 and verse 5 okay we see Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia Paul was compelled by the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. So the Lord was specifically, uh, he has this encounter with the Lord, and uh, the Lord gives him, encourages him, and gives him that instruction. Uh, no one will be, uh, no one will hurt you. I have many people in the city, and uh, I am with you. And uh, no one will attack you. So he's encouraged. Uh, verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. He, when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews. And then we read about you know some confusion that happened there, the persecution that happened there, uh, and so on. Uh, but Paul continues to stay there. Verse 18. So Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila were with him. So from there he goes to, um, yeah, you know, uh, he moves on to Syria, and uh, uh, and then um, from there he goes to Centuria, and then comes to Ephesus. Okay. Now at Ephesus he again uh, ministers there. But he spends a short time there in Ephesus, and from there he goes to Caesarea, and then goes to another Antioch, Antioch in uh, you know uh, Syria and uh, Syria, and then goes on to Galatia and uh, and so on. So he moves on, um, but we see that um, he comes to Ephesus again, Acts chapter nineteen, okay, Acts chapter nineteen, when Apollos is at Corinth. Paul, having passed to the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, then, you know, he talks to them about the Holy Spirit. He prays with them and uh, they get filled with the Spirit and so on. So um, we, we read that in Ephesus, he was there for about two and a half years, or almost three years. Right? He is there in Ephesus. And uh, it is from Ephesus that Paul writes the uh, the letter to to, to the Corinthians. Okay, so um, some of the uh, he he gets news uh, about uh, what is happening in Corinth, and then he writes. So he's actually in um, Ephesus when he writes the letter to the Corinthians. Right. So we see that um, uh, Paul writes from Ephesus. Uh, he writes to the, the this first epistle to the Corinthians was written from Paul to the Corinthian church in Ephesus. Okay, Now, um, Paul also uh, addresses a few, thing, uh, a few things here uh, as he writes to uh, the Corinthian church. And as we read through uh, chapters 1, we see, um, you know, uh, 
the based on what he is actually writing, what he is teaching, what he is setting right, we are able to understand the kind of issues or the kind of problems or the challenges that the church has been having. Okay, so we also, uh, when we read through, we we also understand that Paul spent about eighteen months in Corinth, and in those eighteen months, the church had really become a very vibrant church. We we get to see that also, because based on what he is actually uh, teaching them, right? He's teaching them about the gifts. We read about. We'll read about that. He's teaching them about the gifts. He's teaching them about how to, uh, you know, properly administer the gifts and the proper foundation for the gifts and so on. So we see that um, in those eighteen months, the church had actually moved from just by believing in the Lord Jesus to. Really, he had actually taught them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He had taught them about the use of the gifts. They and many of them were moving in the gifts. So we we read about all that. Okay. So we also know that even though it was a vibrant church, it had challenges. Like it had problems. Uh, it had problems like division, like people were uh, one against the other. Uh, it had problems like of a, of a very grave nature in the sense that uh, 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 there were people living immoral lifestyles and particularly one person uh, living continuing to live a immoral uh, you know life and uh, and then he addresses that and it's uh, he admonishes and also we 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 read that uh, he has to take a very uh, uh, difficult decision right to put that person out of the fellowship of the church so we read all about that so from this uh, i just wanted to share that whenever we see paul addressing certain things we know that okay this church has that particular challenge or is going through that thing or maybe some kind of difficulty of that nature and that is why paul is writing to address it okay okay so let's um, let's move on to uh, the first chapter of uh, corinthians and uh, so this uh, was probably written around AD, um, you know, AD uh, 58 or AD 59. Okay. Um, and and the timeline is that probably around, uh, see, he was there in Ephesus for about three and a half years, here about one and a half years. So maybe about um, even about seven years after establishing the church. Okay. So, and these are just approximations. Right. So we don't know the exact dates uh, or exact timeline, but these are approximately, it could be around uh, around this time. So AD 58, AD 59 is when he uh, he addresses, he writes the letter. Okay, And uh, so he's writing the letter from uh, Ephesus. Okay, right. So let's look at uh, chapter 1. Okay, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll read the verse, and then uh, we'll talk about it, and then move on to the next verse and, and talk a little more about that. Okay, so uh, verse one. Okay, uh, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so so Paul identifies himself as the author at the beginning of the letter. You know, normally when we write letters um, in our day and time, we would sign off, right? We would, we would, of course, address the people who were, to whom we are writing. Like, suppose I, I were to write a letter to Thomas, I would say, hello, Thomas, or dear Thomas, how are you? And then at the end of the letter, I would say, um, you know, uh, okay, regards, best regards, or sincerely, and I would put my name there. So so we see that, uh, you know, this is the way in which uh, these epistles were written, where the author, most of the times, more author would identify uh, you know, oneself, right in the greetings itself. So, so here uh, Paul is saying, Paul called to be an apostle uh, through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother. So he also mentions Sosthenes, uh, who's another person who's with him. And uh, and if we see uh, here, Sosthenes is also um, most likely, right? He was the person who was mentioned in Acts chapter 18, 
and uh, verse 17. So Acts chapter 18 and verse 17, we read about, uh, um, you know, most probably it was the same Sosthenes. Okay, so because it's the church at Corinth, right? So verse 17, Acts chapter 18 and verse 17 says, Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. But Galileo took no notice, notice of these things. So, you know, there was this confusion, there was this persecution because the Jews all rose up. Uh, they were very envious of uh, the ministry of Paul and so on. So um, Sosthenes is mentioned there as a ruler. Uh, as one of the leaders of the uh, of the synagogue there, uh, so most probably this Sosthenes that uh, Paul is referring to uh, could be the same person. Maybe this person became a member of uh, of Paul's ministry team and traveled with Paul. We don't know. Most likely, right? So uh, Sosthenes is mentioned there. So Paul, along with Sosthenes, um, so he says he's called to be an apostle. Right, so uh, apostolos, which means a sent one, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. So it's not something that he took up. Uh, when we read uh, about Paul, we we know that it's not something that he took up on his own. It's not some venture that he said, "Oh, it's a great idea," uh, but he was called right through his encounter on the road to Damascus. We know that he was called. He was prepared uh, by the Lord for this um for this calling you know, the calling was given by the lord so so we learn we understand something about ministry about the call and that uh, it is the will of god right whether he calls us to be an apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher or uh, you know uh, not necessarily the fivefold ministry but maybe in the marketplace whatever it is it is the the will of god Right? It is a plan and purpose of God. It's not something that we uh, take for ourselves. It's not something that we um, we decide of, of our own. It is the will and purpose of God. Okay, so um, what else do we see? We see that uh, he's writing to the church at Corinth. Okay, uh, And the word used there is ecclesia. Okay, uh, Ecclesia meaning the sent out ones um, to the church at Corinth. It's the uh, ecclesia, the ones who are called out okay not sent out sorry the ones who are called out and who gather together for a purpose okay so so when we look at again just to remind ourselves ecclesia the church it does not mean the physical place but the people of god because he's writing to the believers the church uh, at corinth the ecclesia at corinth okay and uh, he also mentions who are uh, those who are sanctified in christ jesus Okay, uh, set apart in Christ Jesus. Um, the the Greek word that he uses there is uh, hagidzo, meaning set apart, consecrated. Okay, and called to be saints, meaning the set apart ones. Hagios. He uses the word hagios, called to be saints. Okay, so we, we, uh, another uh, clarification there is that uh, you know many times we use the word saints as a title. Right, um, he is a saint of God. She is a saint of God. Uh, saints are uh, the word saint is used as a side title, a title, and, and sometimes in the you know in in a, in a different background like a Catholic Church, it's definitely used as a as a title, and it's something that uh, that is uh, given or conferred by the Pope and so on. Right, uh, but yeah, originally, you know, if you look at the meaning of saints, it just means uh, it just means that saints are the set apart ones, the ones who are set apart, consecrated. Okay, so he's he's call he's uh, addressing the letter to the church, the believers at Corinth, to those who are sanctified, set apart in Christ Jesus, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So saying it's not confined just for Corinth, but uh, the, to to the saints. Right, who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus. So, which means that even in our day and time today, it is applicable for us. Uh, so, the truth in this uh, uh, epistle, the, in this scripture, is applicable for us as well. Okay. Um, right. So, call to be. Let's uh, read verse three. Grace to you and peace from. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this was a typical greeting. If you look at, um, you know, Second Corinthians, 
uh, if you see that Paul has the same kind of greeting, it was a typical way uh, by which he greeted the people. You know, Second Corinthians verse two: "Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ." Galatians: um, uh, "Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ." Uh, if you look at Ephesians again, "Grace to you and peace. so you see that this was a typical way of uh, Paul greeting. Uh, the believers, but also the fact that uh, this grace and peace was something that had that had really made a mark in his life, or he had received a revelation about the grace of God, about the peace that comes from God. So he he was just declaring it over the people to whoever he was writing to. Uh, he would say, "Okay, let the grace of God uh, grace to you and peace from God." May you experience the grace and the Greek word charis, okay, which means uh, divine favor, divine enablement, right, and also divine character, and of course gifts. Okay, so four things: favor from God, um, divine enablement or empowering by the Holy Spirit, divine empowerment. It also means divine character, divine virtues, uh, values, character. And divine gifts, right? So it's an it's an all encompassing word, just like sozo, right? When we talk about salvation, sozo, which means healing, forgiveness, uh, prosperity, deliverance, and so on. Uh, so uh, charis, which talks about the grace of God, which talks about the uh, enablement of God, the gifts of God, and the favor from God. Right? So he's saying, you know, grace to you and peace. P peace meaning Irene. Irene, uh, harmony and security and safety and prosperity and and total well-being. You know something like shalom. Uh, not exactly that, but uh, uh, similar to that. So shalom is a Hebrew word, and Irene is a, of course a Greek word. So he's declaring this and let it be to you uh, in the from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, so this is what uh, the the greeting that he. Um, it starts off with, okay, so let's read from uh, verse 4, uh, 4 to 9, okay. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. So he is uh, he's thanking God, verse 4, saying, I thank my God concerning you for the grace which was given to you by Christ Jesus. Okay. Uh, and he says, I thank my God always yes. concerning you, which means that, uh, you know, he he just didn't plant the church and then move, but he was actually praying for them. He was thanking God for them. Uh, the believers at Corinth, uh, you know, maybe the leaders that he spent time, he spent time about one and a half years with them. So um, they were in there, they were in his thoughts. They were in, his, they were in his prayers and uh, he would thank the Lord uh, for them and he says you know I, I thank always concerning you and uh, and also he also talks about the grace of God which was given to them by the Lord Jesus Christ now, there is so we need to talk about something you know that there is the general grace of God the grace of God, the charis, which is given for all of us as believers. You know, we receive this unmerited favor from God. We receive this, uh, 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 the enablement from God. Right? But also, we need to know that there is that special grace of God, which is given to us in order to fulfill the call of God. Okay, Maybe Because the call of God is different for each of us as believers. Um, and God's grace is specific to that call. For uh, for example, if you look at uh, Romans 12 and verse 13, okay, let's uh, quickly turn there. 
Romans 12 and um, verse 3, sorry, Romans 12 and verse 3, um, where Paul writes and he says, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So he's here referring to himself, his ministry, and he's saying that through the grace given to me, okay, through this grace that was given to me, I, uh, uh, to everyone, you know, I say to everyone, I address everyone and I'm saying that, you know, do not think yourself highly, more highly than you ought to, right? We think soberly. Right. Uh, he says this in a several uh, other places also. Like if you look at Ephesians three and verse three, um, Ephesians three and verse three, um, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I've all as I've briefly written already. So Paul was actually used by God in a special way to write uh, two thirds of. Uh, the New Testament, right, of Scripture. So the foundation, doctrines, and so on, and and revelation about the cross and the grace of God, and and all that, God used him. So there was this special grace that was available on uh, Paul that he wrote this. There was grace available uh, or released uh, by God upon his life to go to the Gentiles. Just as there was a specific grace upon Peter to go to the Jews, right? So, sim so we need to understand that there is the general grace and the special, specific grace of God, and um, so to enable us to do what we have been called to do. So, he, he's talking about that. He all he says, "I always thank God concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you." So he saying, "I'm aware of the grace of God. I recognize the grace of God which has been." given to you and uh, i i want to uh, i want i thank god always uh, verse 5 that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge okay so uh, so paul is saying that you were actually made you were enriched or you were made wealthy uh, and he's referring to all the spiritual wealth and the material wealth. And uh, it was all because of the grace of God. And it was all because of the Lord Jesus. And um, he's saying that, you know, the, the utterance and the knowledge uh, and, and everything uh, that, that they had. Uh, later we see in, in 12, 13, 14, chapters 12, 13, and 14, you see that uh, Paul writing about the gifts, right? So probably the, the way he's saying, the utterance, uh, maybe he's referring to the gifts there. You know, it could be that because he he also says that uh, um, you know that they sh come short in no gift, right? Uh, verses six uh, um, and and so on. So um, so Paul is saying you know he's saying he's thanking God because they were enriched in everything, enriched in all knowledge, enriched in all utterance, and. Uh, and uh, and saying that you know in verses six he says uh, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, right? uh, the fact that the evidence uh, that was given the uh, the evidence that Christ is Lord was confirmed in you, uh, there was test that uh, the the testimony of Christ the gospel of Christ that came with the evidence was actually confirmed in you, right? Make firm, established, and secure in you, right? Um, so uh, that in the sense that you you saw it, you saw that it was true, you saw that it was uh, it was confirmed, it was established. And uh, verse seven, he says that so that you come short in no gift. Okay, so um, the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ, uh, it was preached. They received it, and uh, they were enriched in all knowledge and utterance, and. Uh, the gospel of God, Christ, the gospel came with power and came with demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And verse 7, he says, so that you come short in no gift. Okay, So, um, so we, we, we see that they had no lack when it came to spiritual knowledge, when it came to spiritual experience of the Holy Spirit. Okay, they came... They, they come short in no gift, is what he mentions here. And uh, see, some of the things that we need to understand is that uh, the Corinthian church had a lot of problems, 
okay uh, they had lot of challenges uh, immaturity division uh you know fighting and uh, and paul you know later he writes he calls them you know i i, I could not speak to you as a mature people but i had to speak to you as babes uh, because you were carnal and so they had all these challenges but we see that uh, they did have the manifestation of the holy spirit uh, that is these gifts and and they moved powerfully in it They, and all of them they came short in no gift meaning they you know they they pursued they received and they moved in it so um so the thing is not uh, for us not to be confused you know we a person can be gifted a group of people can be moving in the gifts and at the same time there can be immaturity as well okay so we know that the gifts of god are received by faith right and when it comes to character you know it's an everyday choice it's an everyday decision that it's a, it's a choice that we make to obey god to obey his instructions and it's a moment by moment day to day thing okay it's the how we live our lives and two need and both needs to go hand in hand both need to go hand in hand and we we will read later and i'm sure you, you know it's just a uh, reiteration of what you know already all right and he says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts spiritual gifts referring to the you know gifts of grace and which is freely given pursue love you know, loving god loving people character right it talks about the character so uh, one on one side is talking about the gifts of the spirit on the other side is talking about the fruit of the holy spirit and both we need pursue love desire spiritual gifts okay so the fact is that well there could be maturity but that should not stop us from pursuing both right pursuing love of god and the um, gifts okay so then verse uh, 9 god is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord so we have been called as people as followers of christ we have been called first of all we have been called into the fellowship of god uh, koinonia you know to share to to be with to uh, to pour out our hearts um, so that is what we have called to you know that friendship that partnership that closeness for each one of us for every believer okay this is for every believer we have been called for that we've been called to that and it is the right and privilege of every believer because god is a faithful god and this faithful god has invited us to this place okay um one thing that we um Okay so uh, the question is is it possible that they could have gifts even when they are not mature yeah so this this group of people is a classic example of that you know they were carnal as we are going to read now um they were carnal and yet they were gifted right so it is possible so when we see people of god when we see churches moving in the gifts and yet uh you know having these problems uh of immaturity uh that that just means that they need to move consciously and uh be mature in Christ right so that doesn't mean that i need to leave out the other thing and hold on to one thing we need both okay so yes it is possible friends is it it is possible for people to you know just go after the things of god the power the the gifts and uh, because you receive by faith and god is a faithful god he does give um but he expects us to grow in christ likeness and come to a place of maturity of being uh, like like jesus that is right okay so he's called us into this fellowship first and foremost you know we're not yes we are you know uh, one thing to note is that he's called us to this fellowship uh with the father and the son and the holy spirit 
you're called to that fellowship first and foremost and then the fellowship with people okay so this is the fellowship that we are called to this is a fellowship that we can enjoy this is a fellowship that we are invited to and uses that word koinonia okay which means communion or sharing friendship partnership okay so it's wonderful to know that god has called us for this partnership that god has called us for this friendship that he has called us for this close friendship it's available for us he has invited us to this okay okay um let's uh, move on to verse 10 um okay any questions before we probably will end this session um with this uh, but any any questions from what we have read so far um from the verses that we have seen so far any are there any questions any doubts any clarifications okay okay uh if there's nothing okay if there's anything you can always uh, put it in the chat right okay so let's look at uh, uh, let's just read through verses 10 to 17 and um uh, uh, let's let, let's read through those verses now i plead with you brethren by this by the name of our lord jesus christ that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment for it has been declared to me concerning you my brethren by those of chloe's household that there are contentions among you now i say this that each of you says i am of paul or i am of or i am of apollos or i am of cephas or i am of christ is christ divided was paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of paul i thank god that i baptize none of you except crispus and gaius lest anyone should say that i had baptized in my own name yes i also baptized the household of stephanus besides i do not know whether i baptize any other for christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with words of wisdom lest the cross of christ should be made of no effect okay so here uh, when we read through the verses we get the first glimpse of what was the challenge what was actually going on in the church so we see the church all mentioning that it was uh, brilliant i mean brilliant in the sense uh, thriving vibrant church uh, he says you come short in no gift you are enriched in all knowledge and on all utterance and he's is thanking god for the grace of god that was given to them okay um and here he starts by uh, addressing them and he's requesting them he says you know i plead with you okay uh, it's a very strong word i plead with you i urge you right he's is literally begging them okay um so we'll take a break and when we come back we'll continue with uh, from verse 10 okay so we'll take a break now <laughs> 